Oh, I gotta see for all. Yeah, I don't like that. Yeah. Wow. Ah, Friday. Oh. Love you. Bye. Oh no, Debbie, I enjoyed that better. I enjoyed that better. Thanks. Yeah. Yes, uh, I'd like to start this board meeting with the Pledge of Allegiance. Oh, wait a minute. Why am I not hearing it? Uh, my name is Carl Eaters. I'm the vice chairman, and Barbara Chow is here on Zoom. So, if anyone was wondering, we're going to start with audience introductions. I think we have some selectmen here from the area. Oh, Jay Nicholson, bus driver. Nick Carvis, assistant principal, athletic director. Jason Long, middle school principal and curriculum coordinator for the district. Brian King, tech director. Jan Hutchinson, select board, Carthage. Peter Stankovic from Carthage. Dick Pickett, chairman, board of selectmen, Dixfield. Alicia Cotton, Dixfield town manager. Mary Ann Hutchinson, run for false times. Charlie Swan, principal at DES. Next, we'll be uh, looking for a motion on the adjustments to the agenda. There oh. are none. Good. Yes. <laughs> okay, consideration of the minutes of the meeting on March 26th. 2024. <laughs> so move. They uh, we got a vote. Second. Any questions or comments on them? Roll call vote. Don't. Yeah. Dawn? Yes. Larry? Yes. Kathleen? Yes. Joy? Yes. Tim? Yes. Barbara? Yes. Can you hear me? Oh, good. I see it. Yeah. Lots of times. Thank you. <laughs> Deanna? Not voting. Natalie? Yes. Carl? Yes. Brad? Okay. Liz? Yes. And now we open the... Uh... To public comments. Anyone here want to speak or anyone online? Nobody? Moving right along the communications. So we had one communication that actually came in today, and it reads, Dear RSU 56 School Board, I want to say thank you for scheduling an early release yesterday to allow our staff and students the opportunity to view the solar eclipse from the traffic on the roads and the time it took my families to get to the many families to get to their viewing spots. It was good. Everyone had this time to see this event. 
We had an Eclipse learning session at our assembly on Friday. So this was a great learning experience for our school. Thank you again for your support, Mr. Swan. And I will also echo that from Ms. Doyen and from Mr. Long. I also take us to old business. Uh, are there any Region 9 reports, updates? We got Bruce, Ross, Brian Keene, and Wayne Thurston. Anybody? I believe Bruce is on to do that. Yeah. I, can you hear me? I can hear you. Well, we met on last uh, Wednesday, the April 3rd. It was when we were supposed to have a, we were having that wonderful snowstorm. So I will be honest with you, it was a short and sweet meeting that we had for Region 9. Um, there wasn't a lot of business that was done during that day. We have the finance committee has been continuing working on the budget. We had numbers that we finally were able to move forward with. Um, with our new budget, we, we were motioned and approved to have a new budget for $2,439,476. It was, it was a reduction from the original budget that we had proposed. We we're able to to get some savings, some different areas, and we we're able to reduce it for the ascending schools. So we did bring it down some. We also had a, the uh, adult education motion that was for the, their their proposal and their budget was four hundred twenty five thousand seven hundred eighty four. Um, that has gone down since last year, so there has been a reduction on it. It's a reduction for for all of the districts, uh, all the sending schools that that send for the adult education. Um, so far that program is is flourishing quite well. Um, we have a good, the director that's taking care of it for us is doing a really nice job. We're looking at seeing that we can continue to grow with the program and see what it can offer. We've basically, it's one of those things that it is saving some of the students who have found no other alternative other than to looking for adult education and this program is helping helping uh, different ones out on it. Um, we also had during the, like I said, it was a pretty short meeting. We uh, we also did approve to have an early release on April eighth. If everyone got to see or got a chance to go outside and see the eclipse, we allowed uh, Region Nine uh, had uh, early release along with the, the three ascending schools, so that it all coordinated with everything. Um, we're moving forward with our projects that we've got going on. So far, everything seems to be working out well. I think the last time I did, I had stated that one of the one of the projects, the one for the welding lab, that the company has been approved. And so we're moving forward with that. The other project that we have that we got grant money for was the culinary arts. That's moving forward. We're moving, getting that going. They keep meeting with the architect and engineers to get everything moving forward with that. Um, right now, we're looking at our upcoming events is on May 1st is a regional vote budget vote for the for the uh, Region 9. Um, then on May 1st, they're also having a National Tentacle High School breakfast at, in the morning. And then on the 29th, there's going to be the Senior Awards Day. Um, that was basically the business that we carried out on that day, if anybody has any questions. No, ah, thank you, Bruce. Good to hear your voice again. All right. Bye now. Let's move us on to the strategic planning update, uh, Pam Doyen. Yes, we have not met since our last time we had a board meeting, but we are meeting on April 22nd. It's on Monday right after break at 530. And our plan that night is to get our final drafts of the components for the strategic plan. So our new business is the budget. And we're going to get an update, and we're going to have a workshop on it. So we'll turn it over to Pam and Mary. All right, I think Jared has one to pull up. Gonna make it go fast. We're gonna start at the end.
All right. So here's the update on where we're at with the FY25 budget for RSU 56. Let me hit the next slide. As always, we think of three things when we start working on the budget. What's best for our students? How do we support our current employees? And how do we respond to our community's concerns? Next slide. As I stated at our last board meeting on our ED279, which is our state subsidy, we are up this year $319,571.16. That's in large part due to the fact that we had a more people turn in their paperwork and therefore more numbers for our free and reduced numbers. And the state is actually paying for a higher percentage of the cost for our school this year than they did last year. So those two things combined helped us to have an increased subsidy. Next slide. So payroll and benefits from last year to this year, as I said last time, are up $652,172, which is a 4.8% increase budget to budget just with salaries and benefits alone. And if you would like me to, I can share these slides with you. I see you taking notes, but it would be easier. I can happily share them with anybody. And then all other areas that we were, were unable to control, like electricity and some technology costs and the increase in JMG costs is up 66604 which would be 0.5% increase. So added those two together, last time we spoke, we were at 5.3% budget to budget increase. Next slide. So our total budget in 24 was 13,564,319. This proposed budget is up $718,776, what results in that 5.3% increase for a total of $14,283,095. That budget at 5.3% increase would result in a percentage increase of 3.55 for Canton, 4.44 for Carthage, Dixfield 10.37, and Peru 5.80. Well, that's me on the day that we got our insurance rate. So we unfortunately got the highest amount that there could be. We had an 11.5% increase in our insurance from last year to this year, which means we had to add $23,464 to the budget. As you know from our last meeting, we had 10% as a holder for this, but we had to add that increase because we came in at 11.5%. Next slide. That means adding that 23,464, we're now sitting at a 5.5% budget to budget increase. So we think it's important over the years to just show um, what the increase was from year to year. So this is Year eight is RSU 56. So going back from 2017-18, when we had a total budget of 12,959,164 to our current proposed budget of 14,283,095. So it just gives us a breakdown year to year. As you can see, most of the years we were pretty reasonable, ranging from 0% increase to this one being our highest at 5.3%. Next slide. <clears throat> also thought it was important so that you could see your budget impact on towns from the time we started till now. So the way you would read it is, let's just do Canton because it happens to be on the left. Canton had a 12.319 the first year, then 17, then 10, and then they went down. I had a minus 0.855, and then they went back up 11.4, and then down to back down to 3.5, 12.86, and this year would be 3.51. One five five one, sorry, and then the average for Canton over our eight years would have been eight point seven six. That's their average increase. Carthage had a windmill effect, so they had a number of years at the beginning where they had big increases. But if you go down across, they've had an average of thirteen point one two. Dixfield has had an average of three point seven eight, and Peru would be three point two five. Overall, our towns have seen an average of 5.38 of the impact to the towns of the school budget. So on March 26th, the board gave the direction to the administrative team to show them what 5% increase would look like, 
a 4.8% increase and a 4.5% increase. As we move into this, I just wanna remind people that at the last board meeting when the board asked that, I said the administrative team would absolutely do that. Um, but we are at the point of programs and positions. We have worked for eight years on the RSU 56 budget to trim out all of the trimmings. <laughs> so I just wanna preface that with this, that this is really challenging and that when things come up, this does not mean that we do not value them. We do not think that these things are easy cuts or that they are necessarily what's best for kids, but we do wanna show you what it would look like as you directed for each of these things. Next slide, please. So to get to 5% budget to budget increase, we have to cut $64,024. So as Bruce just said, Region 9 came in a little less than they had originally said at $3,051. <clears throat> Mary went back through our budget and scoured and found 3,577 that we thought we could trim from electricity. Those were the two things that were pretty easy. The rest of this, we're looking at middle school Nordic ski program, the high school Nordic skiing program, two clubs at the middle school speech and debate as well as technology, board meeting streaming, meaning that this it costs money to obviously have the technology available and the people here to run streaming. So going back to board meetings where it's just in person only. We have an athletic director assistant who helps out covering games for 6,000. Went to cheering for 8,000, just over 8,000. And a reduction of one day of social work at Darago Elementary School for $12,084. That gets us to a total of 64,437. Brad? There has to be more of an explanation that one day of social work would cost twelve grand. Is that am I misunderstanding it? It's twelve thousand dollars a day. Well, it says one day social work. Okay, so we have three days a week for social work in we had three days a week in the budget. So now it would be two days a week of social work every week instead of three days a week every week. So sorry. Yeah, that would be, I'm going to go into social work if you can make 12 grand in a day. Thank you for that clarification. Any other clarifications needed on the round one budget cut to get to 5%? <laughs> at, the, at the last, at the you meeting, you, you said that the... It was a 5.3% increase. The Dixfield would pay 10.37, but now that it's a 5.5, are we still going to be paying 10.37? So I am not creating 5.5 numbers because if you decide that 5.3 is where we need to be, we'll figure things out with like the region nine and the electricity savings. And I will not get into these cuts. Uh, is it safe to say that if we make cuts in clubs and programs that money could still be raised to have those programs at those clubs? Or... So money could be raised and donated to the school and then they would still have to run through the school finance department to do it because they're but they, all... They could do it if, if, you know, let's say speech and debate, they want to raise the money to fund their program. It's a possibility. It's possible. Okay. But likelihood, who knows, but yeah. Any other questions for the 5%? Next slide, please. So at 5%, the increase to Canton would be 2.93, Carthage is 3.84, Dixfield 9.61, and Peru 5.12. <laughs> All right, to get to 4.8% budget to budget increase, we would be looking at cutting a position at Darago High School, the tune of 57,445 plus everything that was on that first slide. So all of those sports and clubs plus a teacher at the high school. Because the teacher cost is a little more than what was needed here, it would actually result in a 4.6% budget increase <clears throat> because the teacher just comes out more than what we actually needed to get to 4.8, but this was the only Thing that we could potentially think of that we could put on a cut list. 4.6 
would mean 2.04 for Canton increase, 2.98 for Carthage, 8.52 for Dixfield, and 4.15 for Peru. This thing I don't think is working right, is it? Well, it keeps coming up red. Maybe I'm too far away. Okay. So to get to 4.5% budget to budget increase, we would have to cut a little bit more. So everything that was on the 5%, so all of those clubs and um, activities and sports, as well as the teacher. And <coughs> these look simple, but I'm going to explain to you why they're not. So we would cut 3,500 out of nutrition. We would cut 2877 from course reimbursement and the subline of 4,000. So that looks like they're pretty easy cuts to make. However, it's always hard with nutrition because they don't generate funds. So when we cut what we have in line for nutrition and they have a dishwasher go down or a stove go out and it needs to be repaired, there's nothing, nutrition doesn't keep balances. There's nothing in there. So we would be risking anything happening in nutrition that we potentially would not be able to cover. Course reimbursement is also really um, unnerving to me because in our contracts, by contract, teachers and ed techs can take classes and we have to pay for them. That is in their contract. We have asked teachers across the district. They've told us what they're taking. We've put it in the budget. So trimming this 2,877 <clears throat> is a bit of a gamble because if they all take them, Again, we'll have to come up with the money and we'll have to shave from somewhere else, but we're trying really hard to get to that 4.5 as you requested. And the subline of 4,000, Mary and I look at a three-year average year to year on the subline. Um, <laughs> we're, we're pretty high on subs this year in terms of our current sub costs, but um, again, we'd be hoping that we'd be back to more pre-COVID numbers and we could get by without having to look for where we might rearrange that in the budget. So even though those look easy, they're actually not as easy as, easy as they look sitting there. Next slide, please. So at 4.5%, Canton would be having a 1.89% increase, Carthage 2.83, Dixfield 8.33, and Peru 3.98. Yeah. <clears throat> yes, could sorry, Larry. Could you go back to that previous slide? I just have a question uh, on that previous slide. Under nutrition, they asked for uh, staffing, uh, some three staff and some staff consisting project manager. Would any of that be cut if that if we use this budget right here? This is maybe? not people that would be cut out of a nutrition department. This would be if they needed something, dishwasher, new stove, steamer, like anything that goes down. Like that's this is more out of. Um, what they might potentially need in the kitchens, not a person. <clears throat> so I thought it was important to put these back together so you could see them all side by side. So you'll see 5.3 to the left and 4.5 to the right. I am so sorry. <coughs> I just have a tickle in my throat. So if you read a clause for Canton, you can just see 3.55 down to 1.89, depending on where you go with the budget to budget increase. <clears throat> so we asked all four of the towns to tell us what would happen actually in your household. So on $100,000 house, Ian would be looking at $44. <clears throat> at 5.3% and $24 at 4.5. Carthage, you can see, would be $9.25 on a 5.3% increase and a $6.71 on 4.5. Dixfield, 62.67 or 53.22. And Peru would be $50 on 5.3 and $30 on 4.5. So this is the one thing that's on our wish list that if there's any way possible when push comes to shove at the end of this budget um, that I would like to try to figure out how to squeeze back in is the Dean of Student stipend at Darago Elementary School. So if you decide on 5.0, we may go back at the administrative team and this look like, is there any way we can figure out how to get this back in um, and still be at where the board wants us to be at? 
So I just want to be clear that that's something that we're still looking at, like how we could fit in. <clears throat> so the other thing that the administrative team has done is any position that sits outside our uh, essential programs and services from the Department of Education, um, we are riffing those people, so reduction in force, letting them know that we are going to open up the positions and try to hire somebody that's certified. Clearly, we try to do that every time, but sometimes it happens that we aren't able to find a certified person and they come in. We don't get funding for them. And uh, so an example is our academic dean of students at the high school. That person um, is called academic dean of students instead of our guidance counselor because they're not certified. So we get no funding for them currently, um, just posted in the position of guidance to see if we can get it filled with somebody that we can get funding for. Next slide, thank you. Here's our timeline. So on Tuesday after break, the board will vote on the budget. On the 14th of May, the board will sign the warrants. On May 28th, right here at the high school in this room, we'll have a budget hearing validation meeting. And on June 11th, there will be a referendum vote in all four towns. And this makes it time for discussion from the board. And um, we did invite all four of our towns here tonight. So hoping to hear from the towns that are represented on where they would like to see us and their thoughts on the budget as well. Anybody like to start off on the board? Any comments? Don. Yeah. Um. <clears throat> I, as I stated a couple of weeks ago, I think if we're going to get a budget passed at 4.5, that's about the max that we're going to get. Now, I've been waiting to see if we had the auditor's report. Have we had that in yet, Mary? Because if push comes to shove, we should be able to use a little bit of that undesignated money. So if, if we have to put something back in that budget, we still should stay down to 4.5. So there's two parts of that that I'd like to address. One, um, if you add additional care balance forward to that, it doesn't change the 4.5 or the 5.3. Like it, the budget to budget increase stays the same regardless of whether you add more carry forward to that. And secondly, I will caution the board and I will caution you every year about adding more balance forward to your budget because you just sets up a cliff for the following year when you don't have that amount of money to put towards it. You got that done? Like, if we take it out of the carryover, it goes into the next time. Well, the only thing is, I think we're setting out about a million dollars. And if we're going to try to put a budget through at five, five, three, I don't think the towns, I mean, none of the townspeople in any four towns are going to want to buy that. We've got things here that we've got money. You've got one thing that you've got that nobody has thought about this year. You got $44,403.06. That is out of one contract that is being going to be held over at the end of the year. We can use some of that money. I'm not sure what you're referring to, Don. The night that we voted to give the $75,000 approximately on the pay raises, that turned into a lot more money. Um, when it went, it's $158,439.92. When it goes to the taxpayers, it is $222,300.45. We don't need, we only need $29,679.09 this year out of that 74000 So there's money going to be left over there. Next year, there'll be a shorter amount, 19000 But there'll be a total in these two years of $63,860.54. We should be able to use some of this money to keep this budget down. Both Mary 
or I would either marry or I, or both of us would be happy to sit with you, but I'm still unclear of what you're referring to in terms of that money. The money is what I referred to when we went over the budget on the first go around that they had. So I'm not sure what those figures are, Don. And as Pam said, we'd be happy to talk to you. But when I put the numbers in the budget for salaries and benefits, I calculate it by person. I don't go by those sheets that were handed out during negotiations. I actually have spreadsheets of all the employees in the district with their actual salary and benefits for the upcoming year. Well, the night that we voted on that, we was told it was around $75,000 but it didn't stay at 75,000. Don, could you be more specific on uh, on labeling the 75,000? Um, I think we might want to discuss it in an executive session. I will gather the information from Dawn and determine if it can be in executive session at the next board meeting. Yeah, like we just can't put it on this meeting. We have to approve it. Thank you. Would uh, Dick or, or <clears throat> Jen, anybody from Dixfield like to speak on the budget? You got a big increase, but you had didn't have much of an increase the last three years. Dick, do you want to say anything? Or... <laughs> Dick, can you step to the mic and just give us your thoughts, please? Obviously, our taxpayers in Dixfield are not looking for to pay an increase of much of any so we already in our municipal budget before we get the before we get the numbers from you the final numbers from you we already because of certain things that we have to do that have been not taken care of over the years that need to be brought up to snuff we're looking at a increase probably if it's voted on an increase to our to our town so that being said uh, we would obviously like to see this budget be as low as it can possibly be however nobody's wanting to hamstring anybody i hate to see the, i hate the thought of seeing a teacher get lose their job and those kind of things like that but my question to you would be very simple what we have had to do over the years <clears throat> and what uh, i had to do over the years <clears throat> excuse me must must have been, must be must be catchy but what we had to do down in augusta when i was down there for eight years and I've been in front of this board before, a long time ago, when I was down there and explained that to them. We had to go through our budget and we had to make some tough cuts. And uh, we had to take first what we looked at. We tried to take and take anything in there that could be taken out that was not gonna really put a burden on the whole budget. We tried to look at, the, look at those things first. And that, when I say we tried to look at it, it didn't always go that way. A lot of times, through no fault of anybody's, depends on which party gets the right gets the right vote, and sometimes it goes up and sometimes it goes down. So, but that's how we tried to do things with the budget. So, in the town budget, when we get there, we are try we've tried to hold the line um, since I've been there. We've tried to hold the line very close, and we have. We've been very fortunate to keep the budget, uh, the mill rate at the same mill rate, I think it's been at least for the last two years, maybe three, I'm not sure. And before that, I think we went down, we went down in it. But we are going to have to this year because of certain things that have come up, we're gonna to have to go up. So I would just ask you folks, I know these, these are tough cuts you have to think about to get these percentages down, but uh, I, think, I think it's come to the point where in the towns that you're that we have out here and of course we get a big share of that percentage and uh we're gonna we would like to see we would like to see something less than the than the five three for sure thank you thank you uh anyone from carthage like to speak Uh, 
Peter Stankovic's Carthage. Oh, I just have a question. Um, RSU 56, do you have um, an undesignated uh, account that has any balance in it? Do you have anything for contingency for RSU 56? Do you have money set aside for unexpected events, something that you might designate as un you know, as, as a reserve account. So we have a couple of accounts that the voters have voted for. There's a technology account and there's a capital reserve account, but the voters vote to put it in and the voters vote to take it out when we need it. We do have balance forward accounts, of course, like any business would. And the large part of the balance forward <laughs> allows us to have the 277,500, which we always have used for balance forward for our budgets. So Mary and I have it laid out from year to year, like how far out that 277.5 goes. Um, do you want to address any other balance forwards? Nothing. Can't have balance forwards. Barbara, you oh, say oh, something? Uh, yeah, I do, but let Mary speak first. The other reserve account I was going to mention was the money that was put in the reserve account different years for the new bus garage. And of course that's being built now. So that will be down to down to probably close to zero when it's built. Okay. All right. Well, as a, as a resident of Carthage, obviously I don't have access to your, your books, your paperwork, uh, your, you know, uh, audits. So I was just asking from afar, uh, if you have any any funds that have been set aside for just unexpected events that could happen, are you, are you planning for a new roof for the schools? Are you doing any capital budgeting? So that's what we put in our capital reserves. Okay. So we did have, we fixed this roof in the high school when we did the gym because we had a capital reserve to do that. And I just want to clarify that we are a public entity and we work for these four towns. So you can have access to any and all audits from the school that you would like. Okay, I appreciate that. I'm fairly new, so I'm trying to trying to catch up. I've been watching on Zoom. Um, as as a taxpayer, I would ask this board try to keep it down for for everybody. We're we're not a wealthy town at all. It's going to be very difficult for us to uh, to swing this this uh, tax increase. All right. So my my qu initial question was if there was a reserve account, if there is any money anywhere that could help pay for some of these pro programs that you're presenting to us that may be cut, could these monies be used to uh, retain these programs? That that was the purpose of that question. All right. Thank you, Brian, you want to say anything on behalf of Canton? He's Brian's a selectman of Canton also. So I stand here with a unique view on the budget um, than a lot of people have. Um, and I say that, as you guys know, I'm your technology director, but I'm a taxpayer in the town of Canton, and I'm also the chair of the, the select board in Canton. So knowing the budget from the inside and then knowing it from the town side as well. Um, I guess the town of Canton has always been very supportive of education um, throughout the years, whether it be from doing what we could to keep our own elementary school as long as we could um, up through combining through multiple schools um, and supporting our 256 when the withdrawal went through. Um, I think for us, like all the towns budgeting this year is going to be very difficult. Um, as everyone here has seen, you know, uh, groceries have gone up, uh, gas is up and down all the time. Um, all of our supplies are increasing, contracts are increasing. Um, we're seeing it on our town side as well. Um, I think the one thing that we're doing on our town side, um, we've asked our departments to do everything they can to keep things um, very conservative and low. Um, and then the other thing that we're also working on um, the windmills helped us a lot. They brought in a lot of income. Um, they also caused us to pay a little more in school taxes the last couple of years. Um, however, the good thing about it, we did put a little bit of that money away. Um, we do have some carry forwards and things like that, that we can use 
um, to help ease the tax burden. Um, so on behalf of the Canton board, I think we just would like you guys to continue going forward and supporting our students and what they need um, and do the best we can to offer the best educations for kids in our four towns. Thank you. I'd, <clears throat> I'd like to say something on the budget. I hope everyone realizes we have to make cuts to increase the budget, which is doesn't really make sense, but so budget is hard every year. Some years it's a little harder than the others, but we've held, if you looked at the history of it, we've been, hadn't had much increases at all. We've been scraping the barrel everywhere. We haven't really gave up a lot of stuff in the system yet, but it's, it's sad when there might not be winter cheerleading or skiing, which is in this area. We got the ski slopes right here and we still have to dish out, what was it, $20,000. That's a tremendous opportunity for, for kids, but cuts are tough. Uh, I also had a question for Pam. What, what, uh, what teaching position would you think about cutting, or do you have three or four options, or can you enlighten us on that? Yep. So <clears throat> it's going to be either my alternative education teacher, which would mean no alternative education program, or it would be a math teacher. And if it's a math teacher, that means I would be at, well, currently I have two and a half, so that would leave me basically one and a half, but I would probably put the half to full because she's here. But uh, it means very limited um, upper level math classes, advanced classes. We would be basically just offering the basics at Jericho High School. We've gotten to that point in English. As you might know, we only have two English teachers. Um, so we basically offer English 9, 10, 11, and 12, and maybe one or two electives as well, creative writing and something else. So if we ended up, if it ends up being math, we're likely going to offer algebra one, algebra two, geometry, and and something else. So it just will really limit what we can offer. Um, in terms of alternative education, um, historically, we've had anywhere from 12 to 20 students that really have shown that it's challenging them, challenging for them to be in regular classrooms. So we have alternative education to help support them um, in different ways in their learning. So it's one of those two. Anyone else like to say anything on the budget? Me. Mary. Why is that? Is, is Barbara going? No. Larry, Larry Whittingham is going to speak. <laughs> I don't. If someone's online, we'll get you next. Okay. Uh, so, what Pam just said concerns me. I don't want to see any teachers being cut, especially alternative vet, because coming from that system of education, I know how important that is. So, my question is, relaying back to what they mentioned, if you, I think it was the 4.5% would be cutting the nutrition. And I think that was that one right there, 4.5. I would like to see that one put in place because if there's a capital reserve fund, could we, the refrigerator goes out, could that be used to cover the expenses for that? So the piece with capital reserve is would have to go back out to voters. Voters vote to put it in, voters vote to take it out. So it would be a process of having to do a warrant article and going out to vote in order to use any of the money in the capital reserve. It doesn't allow you to react quickly and get your needs met kind of within a week or two because you just have to have, go through a bigger process. And Alicia has her hand raised behind. I don't know if she wants to add something to that. I got to tell Larry, like on the capital reserve, it's written down at the, the town. When the town votes each year, it'll say, you vote to put this X amount of money for a school garage or for a new roof or a new gym. Don, enlighten us. Yeah, we've got money that's in undesignated accounts. So the 
the voters have not voted to put that into them accounts. We should be able to take it out. Uh, you mean carryover or Mary, can you help us on these undesignated accounts or I can, I think I can address right. this. So even though we have money in balance forward, as you'll know from seeing our audits from year to year, and as I explained, that is to help us maintain that 277,500 that we start our budget with each year. Without that, we're going to start basically 300,000 in the hole. We can't spend more than the townspeople approve. So if we have this, I'm not don't know the full number off the top of my head. Let's go 14 million even. So we have a 14 million dollar budget. Something breaks down, roof leaks, whatever. We can't just spend more than that 14 million by taking it out of those accounts that that, that balance forward. You can only spend the amount that the voters have approved you to spend, even if you have money sitting in balance forward. Uh, I was going to ask Barbara and then Dick. Barbara, did you want to say anything? Yes, I do. Before you uh, ask Dick, uh, number one, um, Town of Dixfield's evaluation has gone up. It is based on a three-year average. Uh, Pam didn't know why, but when the evaluation of a town goes up, their share goes up. That's uncontrollable by us. We that is the state that does that. Um, I do agree. I don't want to see a teacher be cut because a teacher being cut means we're hit, we're affecting the kids' education. Um, there is no this great big money in a reserve. Anything in capital reserve is for something specific. It was voted on by the board, by the townspeople, specific. There, unless we go back and we do it for the carryover, there's not that much carryover because I remember when we did it last year to get the bus garage, there wasn't a lot of wiggle room. So there's not, we can't keep saying, well, we can take 50,000 from there and add it on. Well, then that means we need 300 plus for the following year to be up to what our budget was. And my other point is, Yes, like all the towns say, because everything's gone up, we as a board have not really raised the salaries very little. They've been two, one year zero, 1.5, and we and 75% of our budget is our salary and benefits. And that's our people. And we it had to give. We actually are because we know all over the state what people have been given. We didn't do that highest. We are not the highest. So my question is, I know the town of Dixfield went up their share, but when I looked at the thing saying it was three point, um, why did it go up? I know it, it's a three-year cycle. I don't know which cycle it's on because we didn't have an answer for that. And I want to see the less, when we cut, it should be the less impact to students and academics should be the first priority. And so I just want to know about the, um, the evaluation. So Barbara, I did check with the town and there was no recent reevaluation in Dixfield. So it's simply... Um the Department of Education catching up with past increases. There's nothing that would say that, like there was not a reevaluation here in Dixfield. Dick. We got it. So anyway, I'll say something else on the budget. If we, I think we should, no way should we cut teacher at the high school. I mean, what, it would take us to 1.5 teachers for 300 roughly students. It's 200 students per teacher. And English, two and a half teachers is 120 students per teacher. Doesn't sound like very personalized education to me. Uh, we, I don't think we can afford to cut either one of those positions. Anybody want to speak on that? 
I agree. Can I can I speak? Is that okay? It's Natalie. Yes. State your name. Yeah. Okay. Um. So I guess when I look at it, I mean, our five point three percent budget, four point eight percent of that is our, our salaries and benefits that we're contractually obligated um, to fill of our existing positions. And the other half a percent is your electricity, your supplies, um, the same increases that every one of our households and towns are also feeling. Um, when I look, honestly, even at the first list of cuts, I'll speak as a parent. I mean, I've, I've got a kiddo at the elementary school. We probably need more days of the social worker, not less, um, to help our staff and kiddos that are in that building and families. Um, we finally had enough kids for Nordic skiing that we actually had an assistant that was helping at the middle school level to support all the number of kids that participated. I, I don't think there's anyone that questions the value of our extracurricular programs and how they offer motivation, I think, for kiddos. Um, so, and a lot of the life skills that kids are going to use moving forward, there's the academics in the classroom, and then there's the life skills they learn through their extracurricular participation. Um, so I, I hate to see the skiing on the list. Our speech and debate program, I mean, it's it's been publicized here quite a lot at the high school level. I, I feel bad taking that away. Um, our AD assistant, anybody that's been at athletic events knows, especially at the middle school level, that person's helping coordinate to make sure that our home games, meets, whatever programs are happening. Uh, so we're, we're supposed to have an administrator or someone uh, that's at those. So if we cut that, I don't know how we'll navigate our schedules. Um, so I guess I think it's difficult to look at cutting further. Um, we've already looked at what the administrators prioritized as needs, and we've, we've sliced all of those through. Um, and all of those we had as a board had thought were good. We heard from the administrators. We understood why they were prioritizing them and asking for those add-ons. Um, you start talking about the teacher, and I agree, Carl, I, I'm not one that's interested in seeing a math position cut, especially as we're investing in improving our math program at the younger levels. Um, we need to make sure that we have a full offering of mathematics for all of our students, no matter what level they're at when they reach the high school. And for Alt Ed, we'd actually heard a presentation and a request for an assistant to work in the Alt Ed program because of the number of students that uh, were participating and that program was providing a lifeline to, um, to support. So um, I guess I haven't heard anyone else throw a number out there, but I would support staying at the 5.3. Um, for the town of Canton, um, it's, it looks like it would be $20 per 100000 um, But when I look at those $20 and the impact it would have on kids to uh, remove a day of social work, remove extracurriculars, um, I'm not in favor of that. Thank you, Natalie. Anyone else? Dick. First of all, I want to make sure that you know I'm all for education. I, I, I truly am. So I gotta, I've been thinking there as we've been going through this. You have, uh, yeah. Hear me now? Okay, so as I understand it, originally it was 5.3. Then there was this bump in insurance brought it to 5.5 .5 as what the budget would be if it was left alone rate what it is right now, correct? That would be correct, except I did state when Larry asked that I would figure out how to ease us back to 5.3 in some of those cuts. Okay, well, my my point, and I'm talking now as an individual taxpayer in the town, what I would be comfortable with as a taxpayer and, and be willing to pay whatever extra tax that would cost me would be if we could get it down to 5%, that would keep the teacher, correct? Five four point eight loses the teacher, five percent keeps the teacher, correct? There are some there would be some there would be some cuts, some different things, but tough times need need to make tough decisions. So 
speaking for myself, I could live with 5% and because I do, I do not want to see a teacher get cut. I think that would be a shame to happen. Yeah, well. Will there be any further discussion on the budget or shall we move on? Question. Brad. We're not deciding tonight, correct? That is correct. You'll be voting next time on the 23rd after break. You'll be voting on where you want the budget to be. Okay, thank you. So someone's going to have to come up with a motion after some more discussion probably so all right so at this time any board member comments on anything else oh i'm sorry barbara barbara chow sorry you unmute you mute um, Pam, can you show what the 5% was cut I, so I can see it again? Yes, Jerry, could you bring that back up? Just so I get a good visual in my head. Uh, it's early. <laughs> right back. Too far. Sorry. You'll see the first time there's red. Reds for cuts. Let's do this one more time. Right there. Right there. All right. Thank you. I just wanted to see it. And you'll send that. Or you share it with us. We'll share that slideshow with anybody that wants it. Okay. Well, I want that part. <laughs> Yes, Larry. Uh, yeah, I'd, I'd like to take the time right now to do a shout out to Jason and his social studies group and uh, teachers at uh, the middle school for the capstone project that they put together. That was probably uh, one of the most exciting things I've done in this area for a long time. It was nice to interact with the students. It was nice to see them use their public speaking skills. And at, at the middle school level, I don't think I've ever seen that uh, that sort of high level thinking that I did at Capstone. So I, I wanted to put a shout out to everybody there. It was wonderful and keep up the good work. Uh, Dick again. There's another reason to offer these kids all we can, not cut away from them. Any other board member comments? I Elizabeth. agree. I agree, but I don't think it lasted long enough. I I got talking with the kids and I didn't get to see everybody. So I was hoping it was going to go a little longer. Hey, guys, I saw the pictures of it, but can you explain a little bit about what the kids did? Mr. Long is going to come up and explain that. So, on. Um, so there's a there's a program out there from the Constitution Center called Project Citizen. And so our capstone project follows the Project Citizen uh, scope and sequence. And that the idea is that students go through the uncomfortable chaos that is actually trying to make a change in the world. And so um, if you walk by that classroom on any given day, you'll be like, what is going on in there? Um, but that's because they're planning who to call next and who to interview next with a question and try to go through the process of actually trying to make a policy recommendation. And you start off at your most local level and then gradually through the course, you go into higher and higher levels, eventually into state and federal recommendations. Um, it's a little bit different every year because it has a lot to do with who's teaching it. Um, but Thank you for the positive feedback. I The most exciting thing to me is watching a kid stand there and be authentically accountable for their effort. If they didn't put in the effort, they have to stand there with it and soak in the moment of, oh, I wish I worked harder on this. And someone else who did work hard gets to feel the pride of presenting something they're proud of. 
and to segue on that, Jason, the students that I interacted with, I literally became a teacher and asked her teacher questions of how does this affect me? And some of the answers were outstanding. In fact, all the answers were outstanding, but they just, they did, they stepped right up and answered the question. They didn't hesitate. So it was great. A good kid. Once again, thank you, Mr. Long, for all your efforts at the middle school. Any other board member comments? I guess the superintendent's report is next. you have anything for us, Pam? I do, and I'm actually the uh, building principal that needs to report tonight, so I'll have Jared get that ready while I go through the superintendent stuff. Just want to say that Mary has secured a moderator for the budget validation hearing meeting on May 28th, 24. He happens to be sitting here tonight. Mr. Dick Pickett's going to do that for us. I also wanted you to know that we have been posting our known open positions for 24-25 already so that we can hopefully receive strong candidates and complete the hiring process early. And Mary and I have volunteered to attend meetings in the four towns to review the proposed FY24, I'm sorry, FY25 school budget. We have been invited to Dixfield and we'll attend their select board meeting on May 13th. We'd be happy to attend other select board meetings or town meetings to share the budget information as anybody would like. We do have a transfer to report out. Tasha Chapman from Darago Elementary School Special Ed Ed Tech 3 to the Middle School Special Ed Ed Tech 3 starting in the 24-25 school year. And Cindy Matthews, who we recently hired as the, as the Darago High School Secretary, will be transferring to the RSU 56 payroll, accounts payable, HR, and bookkeeper position. We're very fortunate that um, she came on with us. She has an MBA and she's highly qualified to take over, I don't want to look at Kathy, to take over Kathy's position when she um, retires. She keeps reminding me of the number of days there are between here and now, but try not to listen to it. And then I'm going to put on my other cap and go up front and be the Darigo High School principal for a moment. All right, so I always like to start with our current enrollment. So you can see from 21, 22, and then our October 23 count this year, and then our current numbers are at the top. So we are down 30, uh, three students from the October 1st count. We're currently sitting at 229. Next slide or next section. Um, I just want to go through some of the behaviors at Darigo High School. <clears throat> so this first slide is our average referrals per day. So Currently, the, the highest we've had is between three and four on in February and March, but we typically run between one and two referrals a day. In April thus far, it's been a little less than one per day. And our referrals are basically way to the right, the very big green bar, that's skipping class. That is our number one um, referral at Darigo High School. And then we have Defiance and so forth and going down the line. But our biggest one is definitely skipping class at this point. We have, these are referrals by students. If you recall, Mr. Long shared one, his like this a while ago and talked about them. So the one all the way to the right has 35 um, referrals. It's interesting. I just out of curiosity, looked up which student it was because in my mind, I'm like, I wonder which one that is because I don't really feel like I have somebody that's warranted 35 referrals. I looked it up and it literally is a person that it's basically all for skipping classes. So yeah, that's it. <laughs> Most of those are there are skipping classes. Uh, that That's our biggest issues. So the next one, just to go in again, our two biggest issues, vaping and skipping classes. Um, we do have Vape detectors in all of our bathrooms. I feel like Pavlov's dogs most days because the thing goes off. I have to go look at video and do some searching. It's pretty much a um, circle all day long. I do have today the new SRO came and visited. He's going to be starting after April break. Can't wait to pass that off to him a little bit. <coughs> and secondly, skipping class, as I said, is also a big issue. <laughs> okay, Dick gave it back to me. <laughs> so I wanted to share some first semester academic data. 
So in total of all of our kids, we have about 229 kids right now. First semester, there was a total of 1,507 classes taken. 1,381 of them were passed. So about a 92% pass rate for the first semester. 126 classes were failed, which is about 8.4%. Out of those 126 that failed, 46 of those classes are in credit recovery range. So at Darago High School, if you get between a 60 and a 69, you can make up the work that you need or the standards you need in order to pass. So we will be doing that. Some teachers do it throughout the year, but we also have credit recovery summer school that will be June 24th to the 27th at Darago High School. <clears throat> Wanted to give you a little update on BAR. BAR again is building assets, reducing risk. <laughs> We're in year one of the implementation. We just had our fourth coaching visit of the year last week. And Adina Hunter is our coach. She sat with Kurt and I, who's because Kurt, as you recall, is our bar coaching coordinator. And uh, she's like, you are my gold star district. You're my gold star school. She does a lot of coaching. And she's like, as a first year bar school. It's amazing what you've already implemented and you've um, managed to do. I did give you our fourth bar um, report from her in your folder so you can read through it, but I'm really proud of the staff at Darigo High School. They've really worked hard on this and it's made a huge difference. <coughs> we do have a continued relationship with the River Valley Healthy Communities Coalition. You might have noticed outside the gym, we have an opioid rescue kit now um, that was donated, the kit and the stuff inside it, in case that anybody has an overdose, um, either during school or during an event in our dis in our school building. <clears throat> I wanted to share our annual RSU 56 Spirit Week. This is myself and Elena wearing our llama sweaters. And the reason I did this was because Mr. Long told you about the bobblehead and how it's back in his building. And there's my third place ribbons and we get them every year and I'm gonna hang them proudly at Derrigo High School. And we have a history of finishing third out of the three buildings, but nobody um, needs to know there's only three on the podium. That's still um, in the running. So there we are and I'm pretty proud of that. And then I wanted to share with you that diversity day we did have in January. <clears throat> These pitches are Kenny Blaisdell from Operation Reboot and Josh Kennison, who's a motivational speaker. They were both outstanding keynotes. Unfortunately, this day was shortened due to um, storm, but I'm just gonna go down through uh, the list of who we had coming. Not all of them were able to attend because of the shortened day and the weather, but if you slide down just a little bit, Jared, so we had the Larry Labonte Recovery Center coming for stories and recovery. Operation Reboot, Reboot was more than um, about like living with your disability after you're coming back out of the military. Disabilities Rights Center showed up. Um, Seeds of Peace, which is multicultural. The P Penobscot Nation was <clears throat> ended up coming by um, virtually as opposed to in person because of the storm. And all the teachers and, staff, and the students that were in that one was like, it was amazing what they were telling us about our heritage here and and the work with the Penobscot Nations. Oh, Maine was supposed to come, didn't come because of weather. Uh, Maine Council of Aging came. Um, this was stories and ideas on how young people can interact with the elderly people. Um, he thanked me for having him here, said it was the first time they've ever been invited into a school district. And both the people that came and the students were uh, very interested in that conversation. Dr. Hamilton from the University of New Hampshire came. Um, their um, presentation was around understanding our own personal biases and how we can uh, keep those in check. <clears throat> River Valley Healthy Community Coalitions came in. They did step in, step out, kind of like in bully bullying. How do you step in and help and how do you step back out and not be in the middle of things? Uh, Voices of Exchange students. We had students from our school plus uh, Mountain Valley's exchange students, and they all came and they talked about how our school was similar and different from their experiences in their own schools. Um, for example, we have Alessandro, who's at our school from Italy, and in Italy, he's like, I love our lunch break here. And I'm like, oh, what's it like in Italy? And he's like, we don't have a lunch break. Like, they literally stay in their class, and they don't move. Teachers rotate into their classrooms, and they eat lunch when they get home at the, after two when they go home. So it's like just literally one class after another. So it's really interesting for the kids to talk about that. Um, Mrs. Buck did Empathy and Boundaries. 
Um, I'm sorry, I don't know why I have River Valley Healthy Rising again. And Josh Kennison did stay and did some um, work around overcoming disabilities. And then we had a member of the deaf community scheduled to come and wasn't able to do that, but he was going to come and talk about like what it's like to be um, deaf and how um, people sometimes interact with him differently. So those are a lot of the good choices that we had. Some of them, like I said, didn't come because of the weather, but we, I thought we had a pretty good lineup for the day. <clears throat> and I think I just have a few spring fling pictures. We just had that. We had book character day. <coughs> they played Hungry Hungry Hippo during the activity period of that. Um, if you've never seen that before, they're on a scooter. Someone's holding their legs. They have a bucket and they go out and they collect balls out of the middle of the gym. It's quite uh, fascinating and highly scary in terms of like, you would not put me on that little scooter. Um, we also had a scooter, scooter relay that they couldn't use their hands. They could only use a plunger to move up and down the uh, uh, basketball court with. They uh, was pretty funny. When they figured out how to make the plunger work, it really, they went pretty fast. But it took them a while to get the whole uh, idea of that. We also had people surfing. So they literally had a mat and they had a team of people that laid there and the team team would roll and the mat would move forward. You couldn't fall off your surfboard or you had to start over again. And the, so they'd roll and then the person on the far end would run to the front and lay down and they'd all roll again. It was, um, yeah, like log rolling, but with people. And then I just wanted to also share this one of beach day because I thought it was super cute. <clears throat> Juniors did win, win spring fling this year. Go Cougars. Any questions about Darago High School? And I'm sorry, I don't know why I'm coughing so much tonight. I don't see any questions. I just had one quick question. On the bar report, can you explain the bar graph? <laughs> sure. The inflammation fidelity check. Yep. I guess I assume the Further out to the right, the better they are. Yep. So if you look at the bottom, there's a red bar that says not yet. And then it's emerging in the yellow and green is it's in place. So they don't expect um, first year bar schools to be, they expect them mostly to be emerging. But you can see that we have a lot of things that are still in, that are in place as well. And we don't have anything that's in the not yet category. So all of those areas above it from professional development, all of our staff was trained in bar. Um, restructured so they have time to meet is already in place. Family family partnerships is an area that's emerging. We're still working on that, um, especially when students get to what we call tier three, Community Connect. <clears throat> it's um, it's a struggle sometimes to have parents participating in those meetings because it's the middle of the day and they're working. So we've been doing better with having them come on with phone as opposed to being here, but we're working on that. Um, I time is a part of the curriculum where the teacher does an activity with the students in their classroom. It's about um, building community and relationships. That's um, emerging still. Block time and team meetings. You can see that's in place. They Teachers meet Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday um, from 12 to 12, 25 to talk about like Monday is freshman, Tuesday is um, sophomore, so forth. And then we meet every Wednesday morning to talk about the full bar, which is all everybody meeting together. Um, community connect meetings. That's a group of people um, that are in tier three. We talk about like, so it's myself, it's Mr. Carvis, it's our nurse, it's our social worker. Um, it's outside people. Sometimes we bring in outside people to help us. Like these kids are really struggling. What else do they need for wraparound supports? And then we have whole student emphasis. So we're looking at the whole student. So we look at academics, we look at social, we look at emotional, like how they doing overall. And then um, the support, contextual support is the support of the administrator. Just so happens that the high school has a very supportive superintendent slash principal in the bar program. So we get pretty high marks for that too. Thank you, Pam. You're welcome. Okay, committee reports. Uh, is Diana Care online? She, I don't think she's here tonight. Okay. Policy committee. That would be, I believe it's Barbara. Are you still yep. there? I am still here. Um, we don't have a scheduled meeting, but I do want to schedule a meeting. Um, I had gotten from the policy newsletter from MSMA a new policy on one or about student attendance. 
And I think it would be a good idea at this time to review academic eligibility. I had a teacher mentioned, just so we know if, you know, it's been a while, see where we're at and if we wanna continue, that's us. I guess I'm the finance committee reporter, but uh, we pretty much are right in the middle of it right now and with the budget curriculum. Uh, it's uh, Brad. Brad. Yeah, that's me. No, nothing to report right now. Don, buildings and grounds. We, yeah, we had a meeting recently. May 24. Did you want to say anything about the meeting we just had last? Or you good? Yeah, we pretty well went over everything. They locked time. the price in on uh, propane, heat and oil, diesel. New bus garage is supposed to have been started April 1st. Um, if you get a chance, you should swing by up there because they have started the bus garage. I guess we're all set. Uh, negotiations. That's... Uh... Nobody. Barbara again. <laughs> um, now, well, we do have a um, executive ses session coming up. So that's our last um, negotiations. Personnel. That's Natalie, right? Yep. Um, so Natalie. we have a person. We have a personnel committee meeting scheduled for tomorrow at 1230 at the high school. Ad hoc, that would be Mr. Long. At this time, we ask everybody to leave. We're going to have to make a motion there to go into executive session. Need a motion? And Larry made a motion, seconded. Don? Roll call. Don? Roll call. Yes. Larry? Yes. Kathleen? Yes. Joy? Yes. Tim? Yes. Barbara? Yes. Yes. Madeline? Yes. Deanna? Yes. Carl? Yes. Brad? Yes. Liz? Yes. Which the... Explain to me. Members that are in the meeting, you have received, um, that are on Zoom, you've received a new Zoom link in your emails. Um, so please exit this Zoom meeting, log in to the other, um, and then after executive session's over, if you can join back okay. to this one. Okay. Thank you. 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 Thank